Welcome to a new academic year. My name is Steven Stepanek. I'm the CSU Northridge faculty president, also the chair of the computer science department. I wish to welcome all the faculty, staff, and students who have been able to join us this fine, rapidly getting warm morning for CSUN's annual convocation address by the university president. The title of today's convocation address is California State University Northridge, A Place of Abundance. It is now my pleasure to introduce President Jolene Kester for what will be her 12th annual convocation message. President Kester. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're back at this, again, newly improved cost-saving facility. Uh, uh, we have finally hit the weather gods this year, uh, not uh, in a positive way. We've somehow shrinked and shirked that particular problem in the last few years, but this year it's going to be hot. So let's just settle in and enjoy it, right? Not fight it. I'd like to introduce to you the exceptional leaders that join me on the stage. I'm going to ask you to hold your applause until I introduce each one of them. I'm going to ask them to stand, and then you can do thunderous applause. That would be appropriate. Provost Harry Hillenbrand. I have described him in the past, and I will do so again today. Stand, you know who you are. Provost extraordinaire. Steven Stepanek. You have met Steven Stepanek. He is the president of the faculty. I would say that Stephen is the fifth faculty president that I, I have worked with here at Cal State Northridge, and two a one, two a one, they have represented the very best of academic and faculty leadership. Joining us as well is Amanda Flavin, the elected president of the Associated Students, a woman with vision, drive, intelligence, and poise. Please give them your appreciation. We're also joined today by members of the university's women's soccer team. They're off to Texas. They're going to get up or walk out. Nothing protesting what I'm saying, but they've got to catch a plane to go to Texas. There they are. Wish them well. They're great to watch go out to this new and improved soccer field and enjoy uh, their athleticism and discipline and teamwork when they play at home. We also want to extend a very special welcome to the new faculty who join us as tenure track or tenured members of this university faculty. Would all of you who are here joining us as tenure and tenure track faculty please stand to receive our uh, recognition. We also should, through the course of the fall semester, when you find them, we'll publish their names shortly, recognize and congratulate the 76 faculty members of this university who were tenured or promoted this year. That's a pretty hefty number. We have new members of the university administrative team, some who come from outside the campus and some from within the campus who have assumed what we call increasingly responsible positions. I think that just means we make them work harder. Uh, I'm going to introduce all of them. I would like them to stand. I want them to stay standing. And then I want you to clap for all of them, not before, all right? From uh, those new to the campus, Stacy Lieberman, Associate Vice President, Marketing and Communication. Deborah Wallace, Associate Vice President for Financial Services. Shelley Rellis, Associate Vice President for Student Life. Mark Stover, Dean of the University Library. John Breyer, Senior Director of Information Systems. Sky Daniels, KCSN Program Director. 
taking on new administrative roles. Jill Smith, Interim Associate Vice President for Human Resources. Cynthia Rawich, Vice Provost. Bill Whiting, Senior Director, Academic Personnel. Elizabeth Adams, Senior Director, Undergraduate Studies. Patty Lord, Director of Admissions and Records. Chris Exantos, Director of Administrative Services. Dion Zell, Director of the Faculty Technology Center. And Dwayne Cantrell, Director, Student Outreach and Recruitment. Congratulate them and thank them. Thank you. As Stephen indicated, I have titled this my 12th and, yes, last convocation address, California State University Northridge, A Place of Abundance. Now, if you've heard the title before, or is today is the first time you've heard the title, you're probably confused, bemused, or perhaps you've made judgments about my mental sanity. Since we are once again this year grappling with major, and I would say major, reductions to our budget. But I am very intentional, sane, and purposeful in this choice. Because despite the constrained fiscal environment, what I have experienced here at Cal State Northridge, and what the next president will experience is a place of abundance. In my 11 previous convocation addresses, I used that occasion to lay out our strategic issues for the future, describe the work that's going to place, take place during this current academic year, and to celebrate recent accomplishments of the campus community. This 12th convocation speech adheres to that template. But today I'm also going to take advantage of this formal and public opportunity to reflect just a bit on the past 11 years plus and appreciate and reflect pride in this university, your university, as a place of abundance. I'm going to begin today by describing the similarities of Cal State Northridge when I was introduced to it almost 12 years ago to the Cal State Northridge we have of today. Then I'm going to turn to the areas that I think have changed. Third, I'm going to outline our strategic challenges. The strategic challenges that you, with a new president of this university, will face. And finally, I'm going to close with my hopes for how you as members of this campus community receive a newly appointed president, because there will be one, we just don't know when. The CSU Board of Trustees announced my appointment as the fourth president of Cal State Northridge in November of 99. I assumed the role in July of 2000. Even before accepting the appointment, I began to understand that this university is a place of abundance. The core of what makes Cal State Northridge great, excellent, was present when I arrived on this campus officially in July of 2000. As I considered the presidency here, I sought information about this university from folks across the CSU. They responded with consistency, almost uniformity, as if they practiced this response to me. Yes, they would say, it's a university with excellent faculty. The program at Northridge Inn, and then they would fill in the blank. Some said geography, some said music, some said marine biology, and there were a lot of others. So now I've offended the rest of you that I've not <laughs> named. That program has national distinction and recognition within their discipline. But the Northridge faculty, they would say, is very quiet about how good they are. 
Despite being very good, the campus just goes about its work without a lot of fanfare. Another characteristic I found imprinted on the university's institutional psyche was an ability to pull together to overcome great adversity. I found a campus, whatever the challenge, where people jumped in to respond. I knew that the campus physical plant had been devastated by the 94 earthquake. What I didn't know until I was officially appointed was the spirit here of we can find a solution, we can get it done, that permeated this entire campus culture. I learned of this, of course, first through the earthquake recovery. I learned more about this spirit as folks talked about, for example, offering new academic programs. I observed an ease here around the addition of new disciplines and new kinds of faculty expertise that frankly I had never experienced before. Change happened here at Northridge as faculty and staff simply took on the challenges of what they knew needed to happen. I've seen this institutional characteristic again and again over these 11 plus years as we've tackled a variety of problems and goals. General education reform, assessments and accreditation, graduation rate improvement, the campus master plan, strategic enrollment management, and the launching of new programs to meet the needs of our region. In all of these, this campus was simply on it. We did it, we took care of it. From my earliest days here, I also found our faculty and staff to be intensely focused on students and student success. Students were important as folks went about their work and that has persisted as this university has responded to the need for improved retention and graduation rates and as we've embraced our role as a learning centered university. Now every year I take, in my, take time in this address to celebrate some of the achievements of our students under the direction of our faculty. There's always too many to list, so don't, don't be too upset with me when I don't identify yours, but let's congratulate some of these students and faculty. Social work student Ryan Grady. Ryan, are you here? Stand, please. Was nominated by our campus for the William Randolph Hearst CSU Trustees Award for Outstanding Achievement. He was named the highest ranking Hearst Scholar from all 23 campuses. Does a campus president like this? <laughs> Not bad, Ryan. Thank you for bringing such distinction to us. Under Professor Kristen Walker, our Business Students Consulting Project took first place at the Small Business Institute National Conference. The California College Media Association recognized six of our Daily Sundial student journalists with first, second, and third place honors and the paper's faculty member, our advisor, our faculty member, Melissa Lalam, was named Educator of the Year by the California Journalism Education <laughs> Coalition. Our Model United Nations team again won an outstanding delegation award, placing Cal State Northridge students in the top three to five percent of delegations among hundreds of national universities and thousands of students from across the nation. Four cinema television arts students and department chair John Stahl took top honors at the Broadcast Education Association's refereed national exhibition for faculty and student creative work. Another one of our athletic teams, men's and women's cross country teams, were recognized by the NC2A for their academic achievement with 
multi-year academic progress rates that put them in the top 10% nationally among cross-country teams. Funded by a $1.6 million grant from the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine, 10 Northridge biology students for the, each for the next three years were go are going to conduct research in the Bridges to Stem Cell Research Program. Mechanical engineering student teams received major awards last spring with their senior design projects, including first place an overall grand award at the National Intelligent Ground Vehicle Competition. Had a hard time saying that. But as we have said, California State University Northridge has a regionally focused mission but consistently receives national recognition for how well we achieve that mission. Give those folks a round of applause. Our faculty and staff continue to bring excellence to our contributions to the region and to our students. Some notable achievements from the past year, again, too many to list. Last year saw the largest freshman class in the university's history with 5,200 new students. We're not going to quite reach that number this year. We're at 5,160. <laughs> we had more than 10,300 students who were eligible to walk in the May commencements. Cal State Northridge was named by Forbes as one of the best US undergraduate institutions. And these accomplishments are but a small sample. The point I want to make to all of you, quite simply, is the core of this university's abundance remains the same as the abundance I encountered nearly 12 years ago. That abundance is strong, excellent academic programs, exceptional and committed faculty and staff, a focus on students, a strong, enduring capacity to anticipate, respond to, and deal with problems and challenges, and resilience, tested, proven strong, that allows us to respond to external forces and to continue to fulfill our mission. But there are also considerable differences between the Cal State Northridge of August 2011 and the Cal State Northridge I encountered when I first started visiting the campus in November of 99. It's easy to begin with the physical campus. When I arrived, the university was, shall we say, still birthing the earthquake recovery. Those wonderful recovery plans set in motion by the third president, Blenda Wilson, and her team allowed us today to enjoy a beautiful campus, a place of abundance. This place of abundance says to students, faculty, staff, and visitors that the university's physical environment is here to help one learn and grow as a student and as a professional. We've completed construction of new classroom buildings, parking structures, so important in Southern California, residence halls, and we've renovated other campus spaces, including the student union and bookstore. We have new and renovated food and gathering places. In January, the new recreation center will open. And of course, we've added new instructional and performance space through the completion and opening of the iconic and, yes, majestic Valley Performing Arts Center. While students have always been important here, we now, as a campus community, more intentionally focus on student success. Retention and graduation rates have improved 
and critically, the graduation rates of freshmen from previously underrepresented groups have drawn much closer to the graduation rates of other students. And I must say, I feel great pride in these accomplishments, and I hope you do as well. There are many specific examples to show how Cal State Northridge carries out this focus. We've received a three and a quarter million dollar grant from NIH that pairs faculty researchers with students from underrepresented communities. Our EOP program was awarded over a million dollar grant to allow this university to admit 140 more students who are low income or the first in their family to attend college. And most importantly to me, last May when our faculty recognized seven of their peers for outstanding teaching, counseling, librarianship, scholarship, creative activity, and community services, the faculty they chose to honor all built their achievements on their engagement and success with their students. Our university, my friends, my colleagues, is a place of abundance where student success reigns supreme. We now have a sharpened focus and understanding of our regional mission. The university in all of its 50 years has made programmatic decisions consistent with that mission. But now we understand and celebrate that mission in very new and important ways. Another way to say this is that Cal State Northridge now believes in itself. We've embraced that regional mission. We are regionally focused with national recognition for the excellence with which we accomplish our regional mission. We have also over the years learned to do and depend on intentional planning. It's our own unique version. It's an uncomplicated but very focused set of efforts that has served us very well during these treacherous budget times. Another manifestation of the growing belief in self is the sense of identity and pride experienced now by so many of us in this campus community about the accomplishments of the university. Of course, for me, the reactions to many of you as you have experienced the Valley Performing Arts Center, bring strong support to this sense of a growing identity. I've had the pleasure of hearing so many of you in the courtyard, in the lobby, in the Great Hall itself, as you come up to me looking around at this incredible facility that's ours, and you say to me, with awe and wonder, this performing arts center is on my campus, my university, and through our pride in that center grows and enhances our pride in the rest of the university. The whole is beginning to be greater than the sum of its parts. People in the San Fernando Valley now, and this is different, understand how consequential Cal State Northridge is for this area's economic, cultural, and intellectual life. People in Los Angeles now understand the strength, quality, and educational consequences of what we do. And people in Southern California now know what California State University Northridge stands for. We folks are quiet no longer. Rather, we have become loud. And in the future, we will need to become louder still. Once we were a campus where students were more likely to be seen wearing clothing 
with the name of other universities. Today, our students proudly wear Cal State Northridge CSUN gear. As further evidence of a new sense of campus pride and spirit, this fall we're going to unveil the statue of our mascot, the Matador statue, on the very same day that we host freshman convocation. That is September 8th. You might put it on your calendar. One benefit of being loud, of being willing to tell of who we are, is that donors come to understand our efforts and they want to contribute. Recent years have seen notable gifts, and this year is no exception. With scholarship endowments to the College of Engineering and Computer Science from Pradeep and Ray Kachowski, and to the physical therapy program from Dodger Legends Foundation, Roy Campanella, which also prompted the Dodgers to partner with us establishing Major League Baseball's first physical therapy student internship program because we have such an excellent physical therapy program. Our willingness to be loud has also allowed us to obtain additional funding. A few examples from the last year include the Marie Samato Foundation's half a million dollar award to the College of Humanities for an endowed professorship in applied Jewish ethics and civic engagement. Our Michael D. Eisner College of Education shares with five others in the CSUs a $3 million Workforce Investment Act grant to help at-risk students earn degrees and become teachers. A Next Generation Learning Challenges, Gate Foundation is think about it that way, grants secured by math professor Kate Stevenson develop, to develop a technology enhanced hybrid lab course model to improve completion in core math courses. Finally, just as important as any other change has been the nurturing of a campus culture that is transparent driven by the values of collaboration across all parts of the university and across all constituencies that care about the university. Respect is the preferred communicative posture. Outstanding evidence of the maturation of this campus culture is the chosen theme of last year's Staff Service Award event. We are one celebrating collaboration, connectivity, and character. It is in these characteristics of our campus that is our greatest wealth. Clearly, California State University Northridge is a place of abundance. Now to sustain this abundance, let me turn to the third part of this speech. Here I'm going to identify key areas of the university's future. Those of you who have attended a lot of these convocation addresses might say that I'm always preoccupied with the future. And I didn't want to disappoint you this year either. So we're going to continue that tradition. During the past decade plus, we've been guided first by four presidential priorities and then by five widely agreed upon areas of strategic focus. This past spring, I asked the cabinet to consider the strategic areas that were going to be necessary to move this university forward over the next decade. Amazingly, we found those five current strategic priorities to be remarkably applicable for our future, but with some important changes. I'm going to lay these out for you today because these are critical for you as members of the campus community as you work with a new president. These are critical to ensure 
a strong and positive position, a place of abundance for our future. Our strategic focus begins with an emphasis on academic excellence. Obviously, that remains critical. For the future, we must work to sustain that excellence through hiring additional faculty who are student and learning focused with technological savvy, pedagogical sophistication, and a capacity for interdisciplinary work. Our second strategic focus also needs to include, as it has in the past decade, student engagement and success. We believe and research tells us that student engagement in academically related and co-curricular activities improves and supports higher levels of persistence and the achievement of academic goals. We've made great strides here, but more needs to be done to close the achievement gap and to assure that all of our students have a reasonable chance at graduation. I would also comment that our future resides, the state's future resides, with students from all demographic groups being able to have the opportunity to choose their future and to succeed at it. Another strategic area is um, shadowed back by the priority I set as a new president, and I called it becoming user friendly. So I'm here to say that phrase is outmoded. It's old. It's not sufficiently encompassing to capture our needs for the future. Instead, we must focus on administrative efficiencies and exemplary service. These are not contradictory goals. We must accomplish and display these seemingly contradictory characteristics. Yes, we must be efficient, but we must also offer exemplary service to our students, to each other, and to the community. Another area of strategic focus that I talk about in every convocation address, but I'm going to use different words here, is we need to do comprehensive resource planning. You notice I'm not phrasing it as the budget. <laughs> we need to plan for a changing fiscal environment. As a new president, I set a priority to increase fundraising. Later, we broaden that to include a strategic focus on resource enhancement. For our future to maintain our abundance, we must assume continued disinvestment by the state. We must also assume a business cycle at the state that is simply out of sync with our decision making for budget and enrollment. This campus's future financial model must include revenue generation, expenditures, other sources of funds. It must focus on planning for the resources we have and devising new ways to achieve financial resources sufficient to allow us to achieve our mission. We must begin to view non-state resources as core. An additional area of strategic focus resides in the elaboration and building of our regional mission. As a university community, we have prioritized collaboration with the community and within the campus. Today, we're positioned to broaden this with a more intentional and strategic recognition of what we can and must do in the region. The future is ripe with opportunities to use the intellectual capacity of this university to benefit the region. Applied research must be the star 
and it will distinguish us from other universities. As a university, we must make choices about which regional issues and solutions we want to commit ourselves to. And finally, our strategic focus, our abundance, depends on building a stronger identity and reputation. I mentioned earlier the university's growing belief in self, the growing sense of pride and identity experienced by so many of us who are part of this com campus community. We must seek out and celebrate the recognition and engagement of faculty, alumni, and community. We have over 200,000 alums. They're active in this region. They're active in California. They're active in the nation. And they are among the vanguard of leaders in all of those geographical areas. They're confident. They're resourceful, optimistic, and they're committed to personal and professional success. We need to find the evangelists among those alums who with pride will credit this university as contributing to their success and allow them to vocally and loudly announce their association with our university. Then our identity will be a whole that is more than the sum of its parts. Last year, we had a group of 18 of these very, very distinguished alums who volunteered their time and talent as the Special Task Force on Engagement, resulting in a report that identifies ways the university can engage alums and the community in support of our future. Finally, this is part four for those of you who are keeping track. Let me turn our focus to the coming academic year, as I always do, and then share with you my hopes for how you, this campus, this place of abundance will receive the future campus president. This semester is going to be a busy but focused semester for me as I complete my work as this university's fourth president. I'm going to visit your department offices for the last time to greet you, to say thank you, and to learn at least somewhat what is happening on the front lines. Again, I'm going to invite the full-time faculty of the university to coffees, and my goal will be to collect their comments and wishes to provide them to a new president of the university. Likewise, I'm going to seek, with William and Amanda's help, opportunities to talk with our students to similarly pass on to a new president the needs and experiences of today's students. I'm going to prepare briefing materials for the next president. We've already started. Barbara has several three ring binders. I'm going to try to illustrate in those briefing materials that the real core of what makes Cal State Northridge a place of abundance was here when I arrived almost 12 years ago. We have a lot of other activities that are going to occur this fall. We're going to have our final WASP visit of this accreditation cycle. I'm going to continue to focus on the smooth functioning of the Valley Performing Arts Center. I, along with the other vice presidents and the deans, are going to work across the university to initiate the recommendations of the Special Task Force on Engagement. We're going to complete the IT vision at 2015. This is the campus-wide plan for information technology in our next years. 
Human Resources, under the leadership of Jill Smith, is going to take the lead in an effort to grow our exemplary services. We are working on a 10-year resource plan for the university, and this plan will be completed in a conceptual framework by December. This will take the university through the next decade. And we're going to continue the efforts begun last spring, early summer, to roll out a new communication platform for the university so that we can all present Cal State Northridge in a uniform and consistent way. Sometime during this academic year, this campus will receive a new president. Again, I'm not exactly sure when. But a new president will be selected and will join the campus community. He or she is only going to know some of what makes this university, this place of abundance that I now know so well, so special. Certainly, the personality, the experience, the strengths and weaknesses of that new president will shape this university's future. But a key part of that president's work and efforts here is going to be shaped by how you, individually and as a campus community, receives, welcomes, and helps this new president. As I close this, my final convocation address, I want to offer to you my hopes for how you will receive and support. The next person lucky enough to be your president. I didn't think I'd do this, so here you go. <laughs> I'll pull it together. Presidents don't cry. <laughs> That's what I've been told, so there you go. We at Cal State Northridge, including faculty, and student leadership and our staff have a wonderful spirit of collaboration, transparency, dialogue, and civility. In short, we at Cal State Northridge have given each other the most essential human values, trust and respect. So receive this new president with the warmth, trust, collegiality, collaboration, and commitment to students and mission that characterizes our campus culture today. Receive this new president with the kind of responsiveness to challenges and problems for which this great university has come to be known. Receive this new president with an understanding of our abundance of opportunity, abundance of talent, abundance of differences, abundance of energy, and abundance of transparency. Allow this new president to experience the abundance of collaboration, respect, collegiality and commitment that is Cal State Northridge, then I assure you that this place of abundance will continue to thrive. There are going to be other moments in the coming months when I will tell you, as it is appropriate, what it is meant for me to be your president. Today, our focus as individuals, as departments, as programs, as a campus community should be, must be, on our work with students and the fulfillment of our regional mission. I ask you to leave this convocation today echoing in your mind 
that Cal State Northridge is a place of abundance and that in your hands, in all of your hands, is the university's future. Remember, California State University Northridge is an incredible place of abundance. Thank you. Let's go to work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, from my heart. Now go to work. <laughs> she did.